This is Porterville College Physics 104B, Chapter 18 Homework, starting with number 15. One kilogram of water is stirred vigorously till its temperature rises by 7 degrees Celsius. How much work is done on the water? We'll start with the first law of thermodynamics. Change in internal energy equals heat added plus work, but there is no heat added in this uh, problem. So change in internal energy is equal to work. Work equals change in internal energy, which is mc delta t. You have your mass, specific heat of water, times change in temperature, and the answer should be 29,000 joules. The answer in the back of the book was wrong. I think it said 19 kilojoules. Number 17, 40 watt heat source is applied to a gas. The gas expands and does work of 250 joules on its surroundings. By how much does the internal energy of the gas change? Okay, so if you come down here at the bottom of the screen, uh, first law of thermodynamics says change in internal energy is Q plus W. We know that W is negative 750 joules. It's negative because the gas expands. We just need Q. So Q is power times time. 40 watts times 25 seconds is 1,000 joules. So delta U then is Q plus W, a change of positive 250 joules. For number 20, the work done by the gas is the integral from V1 to V2 of P dV. If you look in the book and you see an equation for W equals the negative of that, remember W is always the work done to the gas, uh, and that would be the negative of the integral. Work done by the gas is the positive integral. I have off to the right-hand side a graph of this. And you can see it's, w without having to do any calculus, you can see that the integral is going to be the area of the trapezoid. So instead of working out the formula for pressure, I suggest just find the area of this trapezoid. Area of a trapezoid is one half the sum of the bases times the height. So uh, this Here's the first base, B1, the second base, B2, and the height is uh, from V1 to V2, so it's a sideways trapezoid. So one half, the first base is this height, P1. The second base is this height, P2, which is, I'm sorry, uh, 2 times P1. The height of the trapezoid from here to here is 2V1 minus V1. So when we clean this up, we get 1 half 3P1 times V1 as the work done by the gas. Number 21. We're looking at, okay, the work done, uh, let me read this, for a process that follows path ACB, as given in the picture in the book. Okay, the work done on path AC is zero. It's isochoric. And just remember, work in a PV diagram is always equal to the area under the curve. So that vertical line has no area under it. But now we have to look at the work from C to B. And I've drawn that right here. Work from C to B, it's the area of that triangle. Uh, or, or you could say it's P times delta V. I think uh, that's the formula I gave in class. But I see it geometrically as the area of the triangle. So 
the length of the triangle or the height of the triangle is 2p1 times the width of the triangle is 2v1 minus v1 so that's going to be v1 so 2p1 v1 oh okay and here's this uh, the formula I give in class for an isobaric process you could think of work done by the gas uh, being negative w is negative of and there it is, negative P delta V for an isobaric process, which gives P delta V, and then you get this, 2P1 V1. Number 23. It uh, talks about a balloon that's first mentioned in problem 22. So you have to read problem 22 to get some important details, such as that there are 0 0.30 moles in the balloon. It's at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. Now in this case, the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, yields PV equals constant, because n, r, and t are all constant. And then we can ignore nRT, and if PV equals constant, we can just say P0 V0 equals P1 V1. We're looking for the ratio of V1 over V0. So using, going from this equation, we can get V1 over V0 is P0 over P1. 100 kilopascals over 75 kilopascals. Whatever units we use, they will, as long as they're the same, they'll cancel out. And we get 4 thirds. So V1 is 4 thirds of V0, or to answer the question as it's written, we can say that um, the volume increases by a factor of 4 thirds. Question B, the work done by the gas is negative of W, and this is isothermal, so we use for W negative nRT times the natural log of V1 over V0. The negative of the negative cancel out and we're left with N and here in this line I'm just filling in the numbers 0.3 moles times R 8.314 times the temperature 300 Kelvin times the natural log of V1 over V0 that's what we figured out in part A as four thirds so we get 215 joules but with two significant figures that rounds to 220 joules Number 24, compressing a gas 2.5 moles to half its original volume isothermally. So we use this equation, W equals negative nRT times the natural log of V1 over V0. Uh, I, I've drawn for these problems a PV diagram. It helps, to, sometimes it helps, helps me to visualize anyway. Uh, when I see the PV diagram, helps to remind me of what equations to use and what concepts I'm using. So W equals N, uh, negative N, 2.5 moles. There's your R. There's your T, 300 kelvins. Um, natural log of V1 over V0, which is 1 half V0 over V0, so that just becomes 1 half. And I get 4,300 joules or 4.3 kilojoules. For number 30, I've drawn a PV diagram. You can see it's another isothermal problem. Asking what Q is, well, if it's isothermal, we start with the first law of thermodynamics. Delta U equals Q plus W, but isothermal, uh, delta U is zero. So we get Q equals negative W, so 330 joules. So uh, as the gas expands, if there's no change in temperature, that means that heat has to be added. So the heat added is equal to the work done by the gas. Part B, we want to know how many moles there are. So we go to this equation. I think it's uh, equation 18.4. 
in your book, one that we use a few times in this homework set. Yeah, 18.4. Q equals nRT times the natural log of V1 over V0. We solve for N, 3300 joules, divide by 8.314. The temperature is 440 Kelvin. Natural log of V1 over V0, it expanded by a factor of 10, so that's 10, and you get an answer of 0.39 moles. Question 34. It takes 600 joules to compress a gas isothermally to half its volume. How much work to compress it by a factor of 10, starting from its original volume? Okay, so we start with the recognition that work equals negative nRT times the natural log of final over initial volume. I'm going to separate this into A and B. A is the case where we're compressing it in half. B is the case where we're compressing it by a factor of 10. So you can see natural log of 1 half, natural log of 1 over 10. Now, going back to the top equation, I use the technique that I often use in these problems. I set the, put the things that are changing to the left, everything that's constant to the right. So I leave n, r, and t over to the right, and the negative as well, and get the natural log of the ratio of the volumes over to the left. So what I've got is work over natural log of v1 over v0 equals constant. So now, we compare that between A and B. So the work of A over natural log of one-half equals the work of B over natural log of one-tenth. So here we have the ratio work in case B is work in case A times natural log of one-tenth divided by natural log of one-half, and you should get 1,993 joules rounding to 2,000 joules. Thirty-seven. Using starting with the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. If for this case, we can say PV equals constant. So the pressure at A times the volume at A equals the pressure at B times the volume at B. Setting up the ratio, uh, solving for pressure at B, it's VA over VB times PA and you get 5 liters divided by 1 liter. Those liters will cancel out, so it's a 5 to 1 ratio times 60 kilopascals. So the answer to part A, the uh, 300 kilopascals. Now, for part B, you go down to the bottom of the screen. The total work, that's what it's asking for, that's going to be the work for each path. So it's going to be the work from A to B, plus the work from B to C, plus the work from C to A. So let's solve for each of those individually. So the work from A to B is negative nRT, natural log VB over VA, that's for an isothermal process. Now you notice in the little pink, bra pink parentheses I've put nRT. We don't know what nRT are, but the ideal gas law says that PV equals nRT. So here's something neat we can do. We can replace this nRT with PV right here. Now, which PV? Well, PV is going to be constant in that process. That's what we uh, were doing back in A. So we can either do PAVA or we can do PBVB. It doesn't matter which one. They're going to come out to the same amount. Okay, then times the natural log of VB over VA. So in this line, I've done negative of, and I've chosen um, A. I've chosen to take the point A. 60, and we need this in MKS units, so 60 times 10 to the third pascals times 
And instead of five liters, I recognize that a liter is 10 to the negative three cubic meters. So that five liters becomes five times 10 to the negative three meters cubed. Now, if I had chosen the pressure at B and the volume at B, uh, I would have come out to the same amount times the natural log of 1 over 5, the ratio of those volumes. And I get for the work on path AB, 483 joules. The work on path BC, it's isochoric, vertical line, so the uh, work there is 0. Work on path CA, I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. Work on BC, that's, uh, no, I didn't misspeak. I said it correctly, it's isochoric. Work on CA, okay, that one is isobaric. So that's negative P delta V. So we have the pressure 60 times 10 to the third pascals times the change in volume. It goes from one to five, so five minus one liters is four liters. But I need that in MKS units if I want all this to come out in joules. So 4 times 10 to the negative third cubic meters. And we get negative 240 joules. So the first path, AB, there was uh, positive work done as the gas was compressed. BC, zero work done. CA, negative work done as the gas expanded. And so you add up those works, and you get a total of positive 243 joules. Last one, number 62. I did a graph of this. Let me just go down to that, and I'll show the work. I did this graph in my TI-86 graphing calculator. Uh, but then I just decided to draw it, uh, where you, uh, you see there's the volume in milliliters, the pressure in pascals. I just plotted a bunch of data points and drew it approximately. This little black X right here represents the point of inflection, where it starts to swoop upwards. And if you want to, you can do it in a graphing calculator. As I said uh, in a previous problem, I just like when I'm doing these ice, uh, these thermodynamic processes to draw a PV diagram so I can see what I'm looking at. But the problem is asking us to find the, uh, the area under this curve. What is the work done? So there's our formula given, pressure equals, and it's a function of volume. We have to keep in mind, pressure is given in pascals, volume is in milliliters. So uh, I would keep the numbers the way they are. They're nice and convenient, but in the end, we have to recognize that we need to convert. So work done by the gas, I wrote here, by the air, is the positive of that integral. So there's the formula. We're going to take the integral with respect to dV, and hopefully that's not too hard. You have 5 halves V to the fourth minus 67 thirds V cubed plus 110 V squared, integrating from 0 to 4.5. And when you do that, you should get 1,218. Now, the units. If you go back up here, it was units of pressure times volume. And the units given were pascals and milliliters. So this is 1,218 pascals milliliters. We need to do a conversion there. So converting from milliliters to liters times 10 to the negative 3. Converting from uh, then liters to meters cubed, that's also times 10 to the negative 3. The pascals are fine because those are MKS units. So in the end, you're multiplying this by 10 to the negative 6, and we get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 joules. That is the end of the Chapter 18 homework.